Welcome to Indian Submarine INS Aaron Hunt SSBN Briefing. I'm Captain Jive Turkey, United States Navy retired, down here in Florida, just chilling, having a great time down here. It's nice and warm. Let's get on with it. Prime Minister Modi, November 5th, 2018, tweeted out, uh, Modi received the crew of Strategic Strike Nuclear Submarine SSBN INS Arahat. The submarine recently returned from its first deterrence patrol, completing the establishment of the country's survivable nuclear triad. So that's right. So they announced in November 2018 that not only does India have an SSBN program that is in action at sea, providing deterrence right now, uh, it is the last arm of their nuclear triad. So now they have ground capability of launching nuclear weapons, air strike capability, nuclear weapons, and sea-based is the final leg of the triad. He continued with a second tweet saying, stressing the significance of successful deployment of the INS Aaron Hunt for the completion of India's nuclear triad, the prime minister congratulated the crew and all involved in this achievement puts India in a handful of countries having the capability to design and construct and operate their own SSBNs. That's right, they made their own SSBN. And what's amazing about this story is it began in the Cold War and they completed this program in under 50 years. Let's see how they did it. All right, we're gonna take you all the way back in the Drive Turkey Way Back Machine, back to the 1970s with time of funk and disco and uh, bell-bottom jeans. Yeah, it was, good. it was a good time, everybody. Project 932 was a formally uh, started in the 1970s. Now, nuclear power, nuclear power programs in India had been an idea and discussed among intellectuals from the 50s, you know, since World War II was was, was finished. Uh, but they formally started Project 932 in the 1970s with the goal of uh, studies and projects will be under this umbrella for understanding the feasibility of building nuclear submarines, not just SSBNs, but nuclear submarines in general, Project 932. Well, lo and behold, uh, the Soviets get involved in this in April of 1981 when General Chief of Staff Marshal Agarkov comes along and offers assistance to India in building nuclear submarines and announces assistance of transfer of technology, TOT. This is how we're going to proliferate legally within the treaty limits, nuclear power. Uh, if you have a transfer of technology back then, this is a, this is a big deal for up and coming developing countries. And in April 1982, a year later, an agreement is reached between Indian leadership and Russia. And in 1984, the program formally becomes Advanced Technology Vessel Program, or ATV. So with the help of the Soviets, uh, they reach uh, step one, or S1, of their agreement to lease an SSGN. And the purpose of this is to familiarize Indian leaderships and crews with the maintenance procedures and the layout uh, and the space requirements, really, of a nuclear-powered submarine. It's not like diesel boats. You know, you have a lot more of equipment and relatively less space because of the equipment's spot size. So even though the submarines are bigger, you really got to pack things in right and know how to operate them and more importantly, maintain them safely so you can go to sea, uh, you know, re reliably. So they lease a Charlie class SSGN from the Soviet Union in December of 1986. And it's a four year lease expiring in December of 1990. Now, effectively, this lease is 1987 to 1991, because even though they signed the paperwork, they still didn't get the submarine until September of 1987. And they named it the Chakara or Chakra. All right. Well, the, the Chakra lease agreement has expired and uh, the Soviets went through a difficult period in the 90s. So there's a little bit of a gap here. So we're going to fast forward to 2012 where the Russia Federation in India signed another lease agreement to replace the, the, the uh, Chakra with a new submarine. And they give them the SSN Akula class, and it's named Chakra again. <laughs> I've seen some instances here on the, um, on the internet where this is called Chakra 2, which is probably what it should be called. But the Indian Navy called it the Chakra. Uh, same name, different submarine. Can be a little confusing. And this time it's a 10-year lease. 
Uh, so from 2012 to 2022 is the lease length, and it is expected that India will continue to operate the Chakra uh, beyond 2022 uh, by buying it. They're just going to own it after that. This is kind of like a, like a rent-to-own program from the, from the Russian Federation. Uh, a significant incident happened in 2017 where she's believed to be running. She ran aground or brushed something coming into port and uh, damaged her sonar dome because she went into an extended... Um, dry docking period in 19 or 2017. So she has suffered a little bit of damage there. All right. Uh, step two of the program with Russia is to lay down some hulls and begin an indigenous program to build nuclear ballistic missile submarines. This is a huge step. In uh, 2009, they lay down the keel for the INS Ehrenhut and her sister ship two years later, the INS Ehrengant. They are 110 meter long lengths, very, very short for a ballistic missile submarine. Uh, it's not even clear this is going to be a ballistic missile submarine at this time because of the length. Uh, 15 meters wide, standard for that length. Uh, one shaft, one seven bladed propeller. That is leading everyone to believe that this might be an SSN because, uh, you know, Russian BNs, if they were going to model a Russian BN, always have two screws. And so this one only has one shaft, seven bladed screw. Uh, she's estimated to be able to do 24 knots and about a 350 meter test depth based on her size and what she's made out of. So we're going to focus on the first one that was laid down in 2009. All right, so here she is uh, a little bit later when she's in the water, still in her construction, doing pier side testing. Um, down there on the left hand side, you can see that the dry dock cover or the wet dock, the cover <laughs> is open and you can see the sails and a little bit of the back and even the brow there going onto the submarine. Uh, something to note on the right hand side is the INS Chakra, the one that they leased in 2011, is uh, there in being repaired under the cover there on the right. Okay, so let's take a look under the cover here. What's going on? The INS Ehrenhut is on the left, a Kilo class is on the right, and this is for comparison purposes only. Look at the bow. Notice how they are identical. That's right. They have taken the bow of a diesel boat and put it on a ballistic missile submarine. So this ballistic missile submarine has the bow compartment, at least at the very front, the bow, um, of, of a diesel boat, which means uh, it's, it's not going to be very big, you know, unless they have, you know, a very fat submarine behind this bow. It's essentially a diesel boat that has a nuclear reactor and ballistic missiles on it. It's a crazy idea, but hey, uh, they're, they're using parts of the Russian design that work. And that's what we like about this. So we know that she'll have uh, six 53 centimeter torpedo tubes. And assuming the interior is the same as the Kilo, she will have the capability of launching the caliber land strike cruise missiles from those torpedo tubes. So not only is this an SSBN, this is an SSBN with SSGN capabilities. This gives it a lot of versatility and power. All right, let's take a look at the sonar system. This is the USAS, completely indigenous Indian submarine sonar system. Uh, got a couple pictures there on the right of them showing it off at some of the trade shows. And uh, there it is on the right with the uh, hydrophones actually installed. This is a, a fully integrated sonar system, which means one system does all modes, whether it's active mode or passive mode. And it's based on the Rubicon M, shark teeth sonar system which is russian by the way <laughs> all right let's move back uh from the bow to the sail this is where we start to get a little bit unique uh look look at the layout here this uh the drawing at the top is a little not to scale because the radar antenna and the attack periscope are actually side by side not one in front of the other like that but we're just trying to show you uh, relative sizes and, and where they're at in the location. A better thing to look at is the right below it where you have the top down view. You can see where all the masts and antennas are. And they still have the flying bridge up there. You know, you, the bridge where the guy's standing up is normally where the bridge is, but they also have a rudder steering unit right below them. So they can have a guy in there. And that's just a holdover from old uh, Soviet designs. Uh, China's gotten away from that, but I guess India's still using it according to this drawing here. Now to your left, uh, you can see a great view of the non-penetrating mast and antennas that just rise up out of the sail. And by non-penetrating, we say that they don't go into the pressure hall uh, or the people tank, you know, as I call it. So there's no chance of that hull penetration becoming a flooding risk. 
So uh, even if they, you know, lose the periscope th through collision or something, it rip it off the submarine, it won't leave an open hole into the control room because these are non-penetrating masts. And uh, there in the yellow part, you can see the ventilation for the diesel engine. Uh, that purple tube, that's the induction mast where water is sucked, water, hopefully not water, air is sucked in down into the engine room uh, for the diesel, not the nuclear reactor, for the diesel where it is then used and then expelled out uh, via the gray tube that's on the aft part of the sail there. Really good cutaway picture here of how they uh, designed the sail. Very unique. Oh, and the towed array winch there down below the uh, rudder steering unit, I believe that that is for a floating wire not a towed sonar array, a towed radio array. All right, let's move on. This is what we want to see right here. What makes this a ballistic missile submarine? Well, she might be the smallest ballistic nuclear missile submarine in, in existence right now. She only has four ballistic missile tubes, but those ballistic missile tubes are configurable in two different configurations. They can hold one large, relatively speaking, submarine launch ballistic missile, the K-4, with a range of 3,500 kilometers, or they can put in a pack, which holds three smaller missile tubes that shoot K-15 uh, missiles, both nuclear capable. Um, but those uh, K-15s only have 1,400 kilometer range, but you're getting three of them per missile tube instead of one. So she can go to sea with any combination of these, but it's either, you know, one K-4 per missile tube or three in a three pack uh, times four for a total of 12 K-15 uh, submarine launch ballistic missiles. The K-15 still counts as a ballistic missile because it does have a ballistic trajectory, uh, but it's a significantly smaller range and warhead. All right, so here's the brains of the submarine, this command and control unit. Uh, this just gives you an idea of how complex these underwater submarine systems are. And to control them from one center, they need a, a rather complex array of, uh, of displays and consoles that the crew operates. So starting from left to right, you can see where we have radio communication is an input, sonar, navigation, radars, periscopes, and a common time system so that everybody's on the same time, because that's actually very important for uh, computers to be communicating together, understanding what, when is said, what is said when. All right, at the very first console there at the top middle, that's the uh, general ship control. That's where they monitor systems around the ship are displayed right there in control. So at a glance, they can make changes to ship systems, electrical buses and whatnot. Um, it's a very important system because it has one location where they can basically operate the systems on the ship and see the status of each system from one location. Uh, behind that is the submarine's commander officer's console. This is just a summary console of what all the other consoles can see. And so the captain or the officer of the deck, whoever's in charge at the time, can look at this display and get a summary of what his vessel is doing. Uh, behind that is the submarine maneuvering control. That's where they dive and drive the ship. Uh, this can be one or two guys. American submarines is two guys. Uh, they basically drive the ship like a airplane with a joystick. And behind that is the CIC, the Command Combat Information Control System. This controls the weapon systems, everything from the ballistic missiles to the torpedo tubes, all done from the control room, one control room, and it's done from this console. And all these systems talk together so that people can stay in one space, communicating, operating this very complex vessel. It basically takes all this information and dilutes or um, distills it into uh, the essentials so that a uh, command can make a decision and operators can operate it quickly. All right, and there she is, the INS Earnhardt at sea. In less than 50 years, they went from not having a nuclear submarine at all to having a nuclear ballistic submarine fleet with indigenous ballistic missile submarines that are nuclear, ballistic missiles that are nuclear capable. Huge advance, uh, you know, done peacefully and in accordance with all nuclear proliferation treaties. This is a great example of how a country can develop a nuclear ballistic missile uh, C program um, by working with countries, in this case Russia, but you know any of the major nuclear countries, and get it done peacefully and have a much more successful program than other countries that are more, you know, aggressive in their in their stance, like North Korea. Look what North Korea's got right now compared to India. India has done it right. They've set the model for how you get a nuclear ballistic missile and a nuclear program up and going. Very well done to them. 
All right. Well, I'm Captain Jive Turkey, and this has been Indian Submarine INS Ironheart. If you've enjoyed this, please leave a comment below and hit that thumbs up button. Maybe even subscribe. I'd appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.